I'm Simon Suters in the Energy News Center. You're watching Clean Skies News. We now have a draft outline of the Senate climate legislation. We are still waiting, however, for a draft version of the Kerry Graham Lieberman bill. With us now to shed some insight into what we can expect is Steve Cornelli with NRG Energy. He is Senior Vice President of Market and Climate Policy. Steve, good to have you with us today. Nice to be here, Tyler. So the closed door meeting was last week. A draft outline was presented and then taken back by the Senator's staffs. Uh, meeting with various industry representatives. What are you hearing out of that? Are you getting what you want or do you like what you see from the talk so far? Well, we really like what we're seeing. And the first thing we're seeing is actually a process rather than a, a product. As you said, it's not quite done yet, but the process is listening. It's meeting with the people who in the past have had real problems with comprehensive climate and energy legislation and listening to them and talking with them about what they want to see and what they need to see in a bill to allow it to go forward. And, and we think that's a critical first step in a realistic bill and in one that can get 60 votes and pass in the Senate, which is what we'd really like to see. Now, you phrase it going forward and also a realistic bill. I'd like to read a quote to you from John Kerry after that meeting. And he was pretty tight-lipped, as were Lindsey Graham and Joe Lieberman, about what was discussed. But he said, we obviously talked some substance, referring to the Wednesday closed-door meeting. And now he says, it's just the logistics of getting the language done. How complex do these logistics get, especially when you're essentially setting up a carbon market in the U.S.? Well, if, if the template and the framework were known, if it, all the way the different moving pieces fit together mm -hmm. were known, it would be a very big challenge to write a bill, as, as you can see from looking at the House product and seeing how long it took uh, to do that. Here, where there's still, like I said, uh, an open mind, as I gather from discussions on the Hill, about what not only key uh, business sectors need, but also what key senators need. There's, there's still some moving pieces, and that makes putting the final legislation together even a little harder. And yeah, Senator Kerry has said people, uh, he thinks he can get it done um, by the Easter recess, but, uh, and, uh, we uh, and we think that that's probably realistic in light of the, the complexity, but the fact they've been working on it a long, long time over mm -hmm. there. Uh, eight titles included in the outline so far. It seems that the issue of capping carbon emissions would be the most important to NRG or any utility because you would be facing a cap starting in 2012. Well, starting with the utilities makes some sense to us. Uh, we've always favored a broader, more comprehensive approach, and that seems to be what they're talking about. But starting with the utilities in the power sector makes sense because, A, we've already had a cap and trade system for SO2. We know how to work it. We know how to how to deal with it. And B, uh, many of us in the power sector, including NRG, are actually taking real aggressive steps now to invest in low carbon technology, uh, exploring offset opportunities, and really getting ready for uh, a trading uh, emission system uh, as we anticipate they'll, they'll provide. Does that mean you're preparing for more of a cap and trade rather than the cap and dividend that is set up by the CLEAR Act, which seems to be getting momentum among the senators who are writing this bill? Well. Our sense of this issue is that, that there will clearly be a cap for the power sector. Uh, the allowances that one needs to turn in or the permits will be tradable in some way, although probably in a more strictly uh, managed way, a more strictly regulated way than in the House bill. And that there will be some steps taken to buffer the impact on utility consumers and on those utilities or power companies that can't pass through the full cost to their consumers. Steve, final question, if we could talk about the coal and natural gas titles almost as one because there is uh, a closed door push, if that's the right term, it has not been made public by the White House, to institute something of a cash for clunkers program for older coal-fired plants to, to switch from coal to natural gas or something else that is clean burning. Uh, do you see some momentum for that within the titles that are discussed here for what this does for the coal and natural gas well, sectors? We, we certainly think that there's a, a real opportunity in this piece of legislation to address the coal fleet in a very constructive way. And there's really like three different buckets, if you will, that existing coal plants go into. There's the real keepers, the efficient plants that are large, powerful, have been cleaned up or are, are, are clean to start with in terms of their regular emissions. And that would be great hosts for carbon capture and sequestration, like we're doing with our parish plant with this new DOE grant in, in Texas. Then there's the, at the other end of the spectrum, there's the older, less efficient plants that, that really are not likely to last very long and probably will need to shut down for economic reasons alone. And in the middle, there's some plants that sort of are neither in neither camp. And those plants uh, 
they really, we need, really need two things to deal with those. We need certainty about what the regulatory structures and we need market signals about should we fix them up to make them low carbon plants or should we essentially replace some of them with natural gas that's clean or with renewables or with nuclear. And uh, that's the kind of opportunity that this bill creates. And so we think there really should be some, some steps to help make those decisions easier and clearer. And the writing process continues even as we speak, I'm sure. I'm sure. Steve Cornelli with NRG Energy, where he is Senior Vice President of Market and Climate Policy. Steve, once again, it's good to have you with us. Thanks very much, Tyler. And thank you for joining us as well. I'm Tyler Suters. You're watching Clean Skies News.